Hello, neighbors, and welcome, or welcome back to the neighborhood. I am Squealer D, and I am back again. And this time, neighbors, we are in the world of money, talking about Forex, guys, FX, the foreign stock exchange. And we have mentioned it many times here on Stock Market Learning. But today, we will read an article about it by Corey Mitchell. I hope you all are having a wonderful morning. I started off with my wondrous cup of coffee. And let me tell you guys, in this pretentious little cup that keeps it warm the entire time we're talking, this double glass wall, you guys see the double glass? That double glass wall lets it stay warm the entire time. It is wonderful. Also, guys, that cup of, I know I'm always talking about how can you save money and coffee is one way. This cup of coffee is 12 ounces when it's full. It was full. I just drank some already, guys. But when it's full, it's 12 ounces. And what is that? A Starbucks grande? How many ounces is SB grande? So a short is 8 ounces, a tall is 12 ounces, and a grande is 16 ounces. Okay. So it's a considered a tall, my drink. How much is a tall cappuccino at Starbucks? The average price of Starbucks drink is two seventy five, but New York is the most expensive. Three twenty five in New York. So this cup of coffee would have cost at least three dollars, two seventy five guys on average. This coffee right here cost me under one dollar and if you want to include the glass over the next 20 times because I pay I think we paid for two of them we paid twenty dollars on Starbucks I meant on Starbucks on Amazon so you can get the cup relatively cheap and so if you add a dollar for the next 20 cups this will still cost less than Starbucks make it at home guys it's a shot of espresso and some milk frothed up and I am horrible at frothy milk I need someone to come save me and teach me how to froth milk I thought it'd be easy, you know, I watched all the videos. You just stick it in there and froth it. I get like this much froth, I get this much froth right here. Just one little tiny micrometer of froth, that's all I get. I can't froth for anything. So, if you guys need to save some money, cut back on the Starbucks and get yourself a coffee machine, guys. I have a DeLonghi espresso maker. It costs $115, and I use it every single day. It's wonderful. So let's get started in the Forex. So, one second. My allergies are acting up, guys. I feel all hot and congested. Okay, let's go. By Corey Mitchell, reviewed by Gordon Scott, and fact checked by Amanda Belu Belucho Ch Chatham. 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 Beluccio. Beluco. Belucco. Belucho. I don't know. So, what is Forex? Forex, or FX, refers to the global ec. Okay, I, it's going to be one of those guys' days. Start all over. I can't talk today. I don't know why. Forex refers to the global electronic marketplace for trading, international currencies, and currency derivatives. It has no central physical location, yet the Forex market is the largest, most liquid... Move you over a little bit, guys. I feel like I'm out of sense. So, it's the largest, most liquid market in the world by trading volume, with trillions of dollars changing hands every day. Most of the trading is done through banks, brokers, and financial institutions. The Forex market is open 24 hours a day, five days a week, except for holidays. And that's different than the New York Stock Exchange guys, right? They're only open five days a week from 9.30, well, Washington time, 6.30 Washington time, 9.30 New York time until 4 p.m. So th that's the difference. Forex open all the time. New York Stock Exchange not open all the time. So, its name, Forex, is a portmanteau of foreign and exchange. 
So, you guys know what a portmanteau is? It is two words together, right? So, foreign in exchange makes forex. It's kind of like Pokemon. Pokemon is a portmanteau of pocket monster. Pokemon. Portmanteau. So, forex. Oh, and then it's abbreviated as FX. That's its abbreviation. That's its ticker, whatever you want to call it. Forex market is a global electronic network for currency trading. Formally limited to governments and financial institutions, individuals can now directly buy and sell currencies on Forex. In the Forex market, a profit or loss results from the difference in the price at which the trader bought and sold a currency pair. Currency traders do not deal in cash. Brokers generally roll over their positions at the end of each day. Understanding Forex. Forex exists so that large amounts of one currency can be exchanged for the equivalent value in another currency at the current market rate. So between countries, guys, the, the dollar for the peso. Some of these trades occur because financial institutions, companies, or individuals have a business need to exchange one currency for another. For example, an American company may trade U.S. dollars for Japanese yen in order to pay for merchandise that's been ordered from Japan and is probably in yen. A great deal of Forex trade exists to accommodate speculation on the direction of currency values. Traders profit from the price movement of a particular pair of currencies. So, traders are profiting from the price movement. So, like, if somewhere start their money starts to fail and it's worth less, they can bop in there and buy a bunch in American and get a whole bunch for nothing. So, definitely predatory, guys. But if you want to make the money, you have to be like the big guys. Forex pairs and quotes. Currencies being traded are listed in pairs, such as USD, CAD, Euro, USD, or US, United States, Japan. These represent the US dollar versus the Canadian dollar, the Euro dollar, versus the U.S., the, the European, the Euro, versus the USD, and the USD versus the Japanese yen. Japanese yen. There will be a price associated with each pair, such as 1.2569. If this price was associated with the United States-Canada pair, it means that it costs a dollar 1.2569 Canadian to buy one USD dollar. If the price increases to 1.33336, it now costs 1.3336 Cal uh, Canadian to buy one U.S. dollar. The USD has increased in value. The CAD has decreased as it now costs more CAD to buy USD. So, in the Forex market, currencies trade in lots called micro, mini, and standard lots. A micro lot is 1,000 units of a given currency. A mini lot is 10,000 and a standard lot is 100,000. This is obviously exchanging money on a larger scale than going to a bank to exchange $500 to go on a trip. When trading in the electronic Forex market, trades take place in blocks of currency, and they can be traded in any volume desired within the limits allowed by the individual trading account balance. For example, you can trade 7 micro lots, 7,000, or 3 mini lots, 30,000, or 75 standard lots, 7.5 million. How large is the Forex? The Forex market is unique for several reasons, the main one being its size. Trading volume is generally very large. As an example, trading in foreign exchange markets averaged 6.6 .6 trillion per day in 2019, according to the BIS, Bank for International Settlements. This exceeded global equities stocks trading volumes by roughly 25 times. The largest foreign exchange markets are located in major global financial centers, including London, New York, Singapore, Tokyo, Frankfurt, Hong Kong, and Sydney. The Forex market is open 24 hours a day, five days a week, in major financial centers across the globe. This means you can buy or sell currencies at virtually any hour. In the past, Forex trading was largely limited to governments, large companies, and hedge funds. Now anyone can trade on Forex. Many investment firms, banks, and retail brokers allow individuals to open accounts and trade currencies. When trading in the Forex market, you're buying or selling the currency of a particular country relative to another currency, but there's no physical exchange of money from one party to another, as at a foreign exchange kiosk. In the world of electronic markets, traders are usually taking a position in a specific currency with the hope that there will be some upward movement and strength in the currency they're buying, or weakness if they're selling so that they can make a profit. 
A currency is always tra- traded relative to another currency. If you sell a currency, you are buying another. And if you buy a currency, you're selling another. The profit is made on the difference between your transaction prices. So that's a different thought, guys. If you're selling a currency, you are buying another one because you're going to be getting it back in your in whatever money you wanted, right? If you're buying it, you're going to be getting whatever money you wanted, right? You might be bit might be to sell again, but that makes sense. So you're always exchanging the money, foreign exchange. Got it. It's like it's just like if you go to a kiosk, but instead it's global market. That's wonderful. So spot transactions. A spot de- market deal is for immediate delivery, which is defined as two business days for most currency pairs. The major exception is the purchase or sell of USD CAD, which is settled in one business day. The business day excludes Saturdays, Sundays, and legal holidays in either currency or the traded pair. During the Christmas and Easter season, some spot trades can take as long as six days to settle. Funds are exchanged on the settlement date, not the transaction date. The U.S. dollar is the most effect- actively traded currency. The euro is the most actively traded counter currency, followed by the Japanese yen, British pound, and Swiss franc. Market moves are driven by a combination of speculation, economic strength and growth, and interest rate differentials. Forex rollover. Retail traders don't typically want to take delivery of the currencies they buy. They are only interested in profiting on the difference between their transaction prices. Because of this, most retail brokers will automatically roll over their currency positions at 5 p.m. Eastern each day. <coughs> the broker basically resets the position and provides either a credit or debit for the interest rate differential between the two currencies and the pairs being held. The trade carries on, and the trader doesn't need to deliver or settle the transaction. When the trade is closed, the trader realizes a profit or loss based on the original transaction price and the price at which the trade was closed. The rollover credits or debits could either add to this or gain or detract from it. So they could add to the gain or take away from it. Since the Forex market is (coughs) closed on Saturday and Sunday, the interest rate credit or debit from these days is applied on Wednesday. Therefore, holding a position at 5 p.m. on Wednesday will result in being credited or debited triple the usual amount. Any Forex transaction that settles for a date later than spot is considered a forward. The price is calculated by adjusting the spot rate to account for the difference in interest rates between the two currencies. The amount adjustment is called forward points. The forward points reflect only the interest rate differential between two markets. They are not a forecast of how spot market will trade at a date in the future. A forward is a tailor-made contract. It can be for any amount of money and can settle in any date that's not a weekend or a holiday. As in a spot transaction, funds are exchanged on the settlement date. So Forex futures. (coughs) A Forex or currency future contract is an agreement between two parties to deliver a set amount of currency on a set date called the expiry. 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 How do they want me to say this? I don't know how to say that word, guys. It's so sad. Expiry, 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 expiry. Do you say like expiry? Expiry, expiry, expiry. Okay, expiry. I don't like that word, guys. Okay called the expiry in the future. Futures contracts are traded on an exchange for set values of currency and with set expiry dates. Unlike a forward, the terms of a future contract are non-negotiable. A profit is made on the difference between the prices the contract was bought and sold at. Most speculators don't hold futures contracts until expiration, as that would require they deliver settle the currency the contract represents. Instead, speculators buy and sell the contracts prior to expiration, realizing their profits or losses on their transaction. So how Forex differs from other markets? There are some major differences between the way the Forex operates and other markets, such as the U.S. stock market. Fewer rules. This means investors aren't held to as strict standards or regulations as those in the stock, futures, or option markets. There are no clearinghouses and no central bodies that oversee the entire Forex market. You can short sell at any time, 
because in Forex, you aren't ever actually shorting. If you sell one currency, you're buying another. Fees and commissions. Since the market is unregulated, fees and commissions vary widely among brokers. Most Forex brokers make money by marking up the spread on currency spares. Others make money by charging a commission, which fluctuates based on the amount of currency traded. Some brokers use both. And remember, guys, you guys remember what a spread is? I'm going to show you. A bid-ask spread is the amount by which the bid-ask price exceeds the bid price, right? Ask price, bid price. The difference between the two, that's the spread. So, full access. There's no cutoff as to when you can and cannot trade. Because the market is open 24 hours a day, you can trade at any time of the day. The exception is weekends or when no global financial center is open due to a holiday. Leverage. The Forex market allows for leverage up to 50 to 1 in the U.S. and even higher in some parts of the, of the world. That means a trader can open an account for $1,000 and buy or sell as much as $50,000 in currency. Leverage is a double-edged sword. It magnifies both profits and losses. And that does not mean, guys, that you put in a thousand and they give you fifty. It means you leverage fifty, so you're borrowing it. If you put in a thousand and you leverage fifty and you lose forty nine, you owe them forty nine thousand dollars. Okay, remember that. Examples of forex transactions. Assume a trader believes that the euro will appreciate against the U.S. dollar. Another way of thinking of it is that the USD will fall relative to the euro. So the euro is going to appreciate against the dollar. So the euro is going to go up and the dollar is going to go down. The trader buys the euro at 1.25 and purchases $5,000 worth of currency. Later that day, the price is increased to 1.2550. The trader is up $25, 5000 Times twenty five or times point zero zero five zero is twenty five dollars. If the price dropped to one point two four three zero, the trader would be losing five thousand times point zero zero seven zero would be thirty five dollars. So, you can see how quickly it changes. About the rollover, currency prices move constantly, so the trader may decide to hold the position overnight. The broker will roll over the position resulting in a credit or debit based on the interest rate differential between the Eurozone and the U.S. If the Eurozone has an interest rate of 4% and the U.S. has an interest rate of 3%, the trader, ho owns, the trader owns the higher interest rate currency in this example. Therefore, at rollover, the trader should receive a small credit. If the Euro interest rate was lower than the USD rate, the trader would be debited at rollover. So they have interest, you got to pay for it. It makes sense. Rollover can affect a trading decision, especially if the trade could be held for the long term. Large differences in interest rates can result in significant credits or debits each day, which can greatly enhance or erode profits or increase and reduce losses of the trade. Most brokers provide leverage. Many U.S. brokers leverage up to 50, or one, 50 to 1. Let's assume our trader uses 10 to 1 leverage. If using 10 to 1 leverage, the trader is not required to have $5,000 in account even while trading $5,000 worth of currency, only $500 is needed. In this example, a profit of $25 can be made quite quickly considering the trader only needs $500 or $250 of trading capital or even less if using more leverage. That shows the power of leverage. The flip side is the trader could lose the capital just as quickly. So, they didn't tie it up with a nice little bow. I like it when they do the end. I like it when they say the end. They tie it up for us in a nice little bow. But well done, guys. Well written. We know what the 4X is now. So I also opened up my Investopedia simulator, guys. And this is where you could paper trade stocks and crypto. And we have purchased a couple and I wanted to update you on our stocks. This is our paper accounts. We have up to a thousand, a hundred thousand dollars in it. It shows all of your, all of the things you're doing. It has research so that you can get information about different companies. It has a learning tab where you can learn all types of things. 
and it's a game, so we can compete. This Economist uh, Scalzo 99, they've been at top forever. The Golden Unicorn, these guys have been here forever. I wonder how long they've been playing. Look how much money they have. But anyway, it's got great games. So you go to the trade button, portfolio button, you can look at what you have. We purchased one Apple stock, and today it's gained $11.22. Oh, no, that's total. Today it's lost $1.18. Our only thing that gained money today was Occidental Petroleum Corp., and we bought 10 of these because this is what um, Warren Buffett just heavily invested in was the Oxy. Occidental Petroleum Corporation. And we can look at its... What do we got here? We can look at its different one week. And so we could go over to options and we're not holding any shorts. We're not holding any stocks and EFTs. This is what we're holding. And it tells you when the market is open and when it closes because everything's like the real market. You could go here. You could pick a company like what's a company? Tesla. Look up Tesla. There's a company, Tesla. 52-week high is 314. They're at 262. They're down 4.41% today. So let us look at a three month, one year, five year. It's volatile today. So, I can't believe Tesla sells at 262. That's crazy. Let's buy some Tesla so we can watch it. Okay? We'll buy it at a market, market order. That means that it's going to cost us $1,300. <laughs> so, now it's just going to confirm it. And you can go right back into your portfolio. It's not there yet. But they're working on it for us. See, it's down here. Tesla, 263 each. So, we can go into research and we can look up Tesla also. And this has more info for you. All the Tesla info you could want. There are indicators. So, what we can do is we can come in here. I'm still learning to use everybody's charts are different, guys. And so you have to kind of learn how to use their their chart, first of all. So here's a Bollinger Band, guys. Remember Bollinger Bands, when they squeeze, it means volatility. And when it bops outside of the resistance upper or resistance lower, it means higher volatility. Like this might be called a squeeze because it got skinny. This one right here. And then it indicates higher volatility so let us see what is their RSI they have a lot of um, indicators guys you can pretty much RSI here you can pretty much use any indicator on Investopedia so you can see it went way over the RSI here and now it's cut back down so my thought is most likely we're going to watch this because most likely it's going to go down, guys. I'm thinking he's going to go below the 220. Well, it'll be higher up. but I'm thinking it's going to go below, below this line, guys. It's looking pretty winkety. That's just my guess, though. It's just a guess. But we'll watch it and we'll see. So there is that. And then there's more information about it, guys. How many employees. And all of its, its beta. It's got its dividends. It's, they don't do dividends. Okay. Fundamental data. That's for fundamental analysis. We could check out crypto. I've never looked at their crypto. 
I have no crypto. How do we get crypto? There we go. What do we want? Look at Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Imagine if you just had a couple Bitcoins. Each Bitcoin, one Bitcoin, is worth $30,629.63. Can I get a Bitcoin? How many Bitcoin? We can't buy a whole Bitcoin. We just buy an amount. Let's buy some. What do we buy? Let's buy $1,000 worth of Bitcoin. Yeah? Buy it in USD. We'll buy it up. $1,000 in Bitcoin. Market order. Preview your order. There's our order. Estimated total, $1,000. Submit. Okay. We did it, guys. We are now paper Bitcoin or Bitcoin owners. Uh-oh, we already lost. Well... Womp, womp, womp. That's okay. That's okay. We got our Bitcoin. Look at us. We got 0.03265% of a Bitcoin. That's wild. We spent $1,000 and didn't even get a tenth of a Bitcoin. Wow. Okay. So, bought back over to stocks. And then look what we got here. We have, what did we just, it still hasn't went through our Tesla. Let us look and see. We can see. High vol. Sorry, guys. I can't see my keyboard because my mic blocks everything. It's so big it hangs out over. High volatile socks for socks. Imagine if you're buying highly volatile socks. They would probably stink. Okay. Coffee is done. It was still warm at the very last drink. That was wonderful, huh? It's great when you're um, most volatile U.S. stocks. We got Pierce Pharmaceuticals. Man, look at how they tanked. Holy tanker. P-I-R-S. Let's look that up. Where is our? Okay, where are you? P-I-R-S. It didn't. Okay. It's pharmaceutical. Why is it tink? Whoa, it's only at 0.2695 cents. This is called a penny stock, guys, and they mean it. It's less than a penny. It used to be 52-week high, 212, so it's always been low. Let's look at their five-year. Where did they go down from? They've been all the way up here at $5. I don't know. It looks like somebody pump and dumped this, huh? They bought some right here at the end when they knew it was going to go away. Because one day, it sure went down really quick today. It went down 69 cents today. Or 69%. It went down 62 cents. It used to be 80 cents. Now it's... Wow. I wonder why. What's its information say? We need to go to research PRS. Okay. And then we can see what's up with it. What does it say? That doesn't say anything. More info, guys. Got to look it up correctly. Okay, what does it say about this horrendous stock? It says, it's a clinical stage biotechnology company which engages in the discovery and development of anti calum based drugs. Its pipeline includes immuno-oncology, respiratory, and anemia and other disease areas. The company was founded by Claude Schlopper and Arnie Skurrock in 2001 and is headquartered in Boston, Massachusetts. Well, what happened? People don't have ki uh they don't have cancer no more. What's an anti calin based drug? What what do we not need these type of drugs anymore? They also do respiratory and onco immuno oncology. What? Why aren't they you guys? Why don't we need them anymore? We have other companies like Coca-Cola that doesn't close, but Companies that are pharmaceuticals that make, like, cancer treatments, they close. So let's see what this is. What's an anti-calin-based drug? 
are based on human lipocalins, a family of proteins that normally transport small molecules such as steroids and lipids within the body. Okay. Now I see it goes through your juices. It's a juice pharmaceutical. Maybe they don't maybe maybe they're wrong. Maybe they made oh. Or they're being used in in lieu of monoclonal antibodies. Okay. So maybe anti callan on Wikipedia that tell you everything. Maybe it's just just a, a thinking here, guys. Maybe they made these anti callan meds and then guess what happened? They didn't work or something. Because this is a a big fat fail to be at what is their what is their stock at? Twenty seven cents? Man. That's no good. That's no good at all. Okay, well, where's we don't want to buy them, huh? Let's see who else is. Good stock to buy today. Let's see what some never believe people that say this, okay? But we're just gonna look. NASDAQ Amazon. Oh, let's check Amazon's. What's their ticker? Amazon ticker. What's Amazon's ticker? We look it up. Amazon. A M Z N. Okay. And it's best to learn the tickers, guys. They're down six point six percent, so just seventy five cents today. They're at one twenty five. You would think that Amazon would sell higher per share than Tesla. I mean, just because we all use Amazon, but none of us use Tesla. Like, obviously, some people buy Teslas, but how many Teslas have sold? How many Teslas have been sold? According to Tesla Investor Reports, Tesla has sold 1.9 million electric vehicles. Interestingly, 32% of all Teslas sold since 2016 have so have been sold so far in 2021. So, the majority of them, one third of them, were sold in 2021. So he had most of his sales later. So 1.9 million people drive a Tesla. 1.9 million people drive a Tesla. How many people have an Amazon Prime membership? 200 million Amazon Prime memberships around the world. So I don't understand why if 200 million people purchase from Amazon, that's just the Prime members, guys. How many of you guys, I know people right now that buy stuff off my Amazon Prime so they could get free shipping. So how many people use Amazon and don't have a Prime member? Probably another 200 million people. So we're going to say Amazon has 200 million people that use it. And Tesla sold 1.9 million cars. That's so far from their customers. I don't get it. I think Tesla's overpriced, guys. I think that we're going to see Tesla have a price connection correction. Do not take this as financial advice, guys. This is a dorky 40-year-old lady making predictions. But if you think about the company and you think about how, um, if you look at EV battery, why is it on caps lock? EV, EV battery um, availability. So, I've been saying this since the beginning. Guys, this was written in October of 2022. There is a shortage of EV batteries. That's electric car batteries, electric vehicle batteries. There's a shortage, guys, because people don't want to talk about it. But what are batteries made out of? They're made out of, um, oh, lithium. The lithium car batteries take a lot of water guys and guess what we're running out of water you can't keep making things with water and expect us to have water to drink when you're mixing chemicals in with it this is not just a normal reaction you guys where 
they put their water in somebody's stomach and you drink it down and then they poop it out and we reuse the water. They are putting lithium in the water, guys. Lithium. It's cancer causing. You cannot put lithium in your water and then reuse it as bath water or drinking water. We're destroying this water. And so we can't just keep making electric vehicles with lithium batteries. We need to have a different a different way. And guess what? Oh, Elon Musk, he's not looking for a different way. He's not. He's trying to make this way more affordable so he can lower the prices of his cars. That's not helpful for our world. 1.9 million people bought into a system that's not going to keep going because we can't keep taking our water and using it for lithium. Okay? So, I have a feeling that EV vehicles are going to, when, when people realize this, when people realize that we can't keep using lithium batteries for everything, I have a feeling his overbloated stock that is at $262 right now is going to go down, especially when people find out that it's less useful to the world than even Amazon, and I think Amazon is a waste of money. So I would say I do not see Old boy Elon Musk, unless he invests heavily in going off of this planet, I don't see him helping us with EV vehicles. He's not helping us, guys. He's helping his bank. He's helping his bank account. How many times have you been a person in the world and helped somebody else out? Probably a lot. I know I've helped people out millions of times, and I am not, I'm not bragging, guys. I'm just saying, how many times has Elon Musk helped us out? 1.9 million people bought his cars, and he has helped nobody. Elon Musk does not help people. And people could say, oh, but he does. He gave internet to Ukraine. Come on, Squealer D. Uh, Elon Musk is a good, good guy. No, he's not. He's not a good guy. He's not a good guy at all. He's worth $234 billion billion you guys know what one billion dollars could do to the food system in america if he just gave a billion dollars to the food system in america he could help ensure that children don't go hungry he doesn't you know why he doesn't because it'd be a billion dollars less for him a billion dollars less to invest in his rocket ships to go to a to go to a whole new world instead of take care of the world here all these rich guys, they're not good guys. They're not here. Okay, so Modi wants Elon Musk to come to India so that they can make more batteries, guys, and use more water. Oy vey. What? What does that mean? Oh, what is it, you guys? Is I don't know what this means what's today this is today he said this today oh elon musk that's why i don't look up elon musk he what what does cis mean guys cis just means you're straight right i'm old but it's they say it's a derogatory slur word used to describe a person who has a gender identity hold on cis is a Gender identity that matches their sex assigned at birth. A person whose sex was assigned male at birth and identifies as a boy or man or female and identifies as a woman is considered cis. Uh, it's the antonym of transgender. Okay, so it's the opposite of transgender. That's what I thought. On the side of. Cis in Latin means on the side of. So cisgender means on the side of that gen of the gender that you were assigned to birth. Okay, that makes sense, right? So why why is it uh, derogatory? It said it was derogatory, right? It said right here, Wikipedia told me it's derogatory. Where where does it? Why is it derogatory? Who made it up that made it derogatory? You guys, I don't even understand why some words are derogatory and I need to be told. So I'm not like some people are just ignorant on these on these uh, on these type of topics. 
I don't know. I don't know what it means. I guess he's saying it's the they said right here. I don't know where it went. It doesn't say here. A cisgender person may identify that. I don't know why it said it's derogatory right here. But it didn't say it in there. You guys seen that? Where did it? It said it out there, but when you click in it, it doesn't say it. I'm so confused. Wikipedia, you fail me today. So, he says, no more on Twitter, guys. The words cisgender and cis are considered slurs under the social media platform's content policy, the latest ad hoc policy change implemented by the billionaire, who has previously made controversial remarks on gender identity. Musk tweeted two words are considered slurs on his platform and warned that targeted harassment against any person would result at minimum temporary suspicions. I don't even use Twitter. I can't even bring myself to use Twitter, and I didn't use Twitter before Elon Musk bought it. Well, now we know. It's a, I, I never even heard that that word was a slur. Makes sense. Everything's a slur these days, right? So, should we, they say Amazon. Every time, Elon must be everywhere on the news. He loves that. Why is he always on the news? I could see if he was on the news because, you know, like, he gave a bunch of children something. He's on the news for nothing all the time. I shot Komodi's hand. I'm going to be on the news. Elon Musk, get out of my face. Who's going to do it today? What's this? Cement company, CHCC. Ooh, you know cement, you guys. You got to know about CHCC. What was it called? CHCC. You got to know about CHCC. You got to know. Uh-oh. It's not. Did I look at it wrong? Oh, it's PSX market. <laughs> I was looking at the wrong one, guys. What do we got here? Mimo. Let's look up Mimo. Never heard of Mimo. Airspan Networks Holdings. Okay, so this is a penny stock. That's penny stocks always go. Highly volatile. It's a pharmaceutical in a clinical stage biotechnology company which engages in the discovery and development of antiplan based drugs. So, guys, this is another antiplan based drug one. So, I bet you all antiplan based drugs. So, the NA National Institute of Health. AstraZeneca. I'm trying to see if maybe something came out that they're not as good or something. Because sometimes the news, if they talk about it, then it'll make it go down. I don't see anything new on it. But sometimes when they have something new, because this is the second anticlan-based drug that we've seen today. Based drugs. Stock market. Pharmaceutical stocks for quarter two. Okay. Brr. These are just pharmaceutical stocks. Eli Lilly. We don't care about that. What we care about is who's good? Who's doing good? What are they studying? So these guys are not penny stocks except for a certo. What is a certo? Acerto. What do they do? Commercial pharmaceuticals. Neurology, hospital, and pain and inflammation. That's a good one. Yeah. This is a good one, guys. This is the one. If if they 
Pain and inflammation is what everybody's dying from. Pain and inflammation. Inflammation is literally the, the breakdown of your body. It's everything. So, I mean, like, if you can focus on pain and inflammation, how many people could you help? More people than Elon Musk. Okay. So, that is it for today, guys. We know what the Forex is. We've looked at some of these. We have our stocks. What we're going to do is focus on these more often now. Um, where did it go? Oh, it's my portfolio. Let's see if they purchased so here's our Tesla. It's already down. Look at our Tesla. It's already down. $5. Okay, well, that's it. $5 down and $5 to go. Let's go. Today's change, we are down $242. And our total gain, we are only up $4. Guys, we have $2,700 invested, and we are up $4. Not looking good for us, guys. Uh, you have to remember that a lot of these choices are based on we want to watch them and see what's going to happen because... Um, overall, Anheuser-Busch, since we purchased it, is only down 95 cents, guys. Remember when we were watching Anheuser because of the Bud Light debacle? Well, we purchased Anheuser. When did we purchase it? Do we have a purchase history? Can we look at that? If we go to it, can we look at when we purchased it? No. No, we cannot. Trade history. Oh, there we go. Look at us. Look at us. We purchased it on 525, guys. So we purchased Budweiser one month ago almost. We purchased it a month ago, 10 of them at $56. Okay? That's not what we wanted to look at. Back to portfolio. So we purchased Bud Light one month ago because of the debacle that they were having. And since we purchased it, guys, its total loss was only a dollar twenty-five. So, people did all of that boycotting and all of that hubba baloo over Bud Light and over Anheuser Busch and all those crazy things they did just to lose a dollar twenty-five. Like it literally went down point two two percent, guys. Not even a whole percent. 0.22%. And if you look at their stock, which I've told you guys keep looking at this whole time, and we throw a moving average, throw this moving average up, as you guys see, its moving average has stayed well above its lowest point ever in 2022. Its lowest point ever is way down here, guys. You see it? Way down here. And here it is still up here on an upward movement. So don't believe everything you see on the news, okay? We have purchased this stock one month ago. And since we've purchased our stock, it has only went down 0.22%, guys. 2-2%. That's it right there. Budweiser, we bought 10 of them. It is on, we've only lost $1.25 in a month. We purchased this on 525. It is now 621. They started having their issues on April 1st. So, guys, after almost this is April, April to May, May to June, it's been almost three months now, and nothing's happened. You guys can't believe everything you see on the news, okay? Because this dip right here. They say this is the dip. It happened March, April, April, where are you, April? That's, this is the day that they happened. And you can see some sell-offs. Wait, no, there were March, April, May. And it bought back up. Not too low, guys. Not too low. 56, the highest it was at before it happened was 65. It's $9 down. It's not that big of a deal when this happens all the time, guys. Look where it was at in November of 2022. Look where it was at in October of 2022. Look where it was at in September of 2022. Look where it was at. In June of 2022, these are all lower than it is now, guys. 53 in March of 2022. We could go back all the way. October of 2021, this is how low it was, guys. 
all the way back. This is how it goes. You see this? This beer, these, this is all before. This is all after 2020. You guys have to remember that 2020 changed everything. We closed every bar down. This is still highly volatile from 2020, guys. Look at this. It never went up to where it was. Any beer, anything would never went up to where it was because we had a pandemic, guys. Don't believe everything you hear on TV. Look for yourself. Do experiments for yourself. And that is it for today. I hope you guys had a wonderful day. I will see you all here tomorrow, same time, same place. Be there or be square. Have a great day, neighbors, and enjoy.